Well, hello everyone. My name is Todd Letts and I'm CEO of the Brampton Board of Trade and I'm your host today for the Brampton Board of Trade's expert series. Today's expert interview is with Robert Kunahiro. Robert is the Regional Director for Halton and Peel Regions for the CFO Center. He's also the Automotive and Advanced Manufacturing Sector Head. Welcome, Robert. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Todd. I've really been looking forward to our conversation. CFO Center is the number one provider of part-time CFO services in Canada and globally. And there certainly is uh, a, a war on recruiting talent uh, and filling vacancies. And the innovative model, this fast growing business model that the CFO Center has, uh, helps small and medium sized businesses to benefit from the knowledge and experience of top flight large company CFOs at a price that they can afford. So in, a, in addition, they, they can benefit, uh, companies can benefit from the network of 80 CFOs across uh, Canada with a variety of special needs and uh, in both function and, uh, and industry. Prior to his role uh, with the CFO uh, center and his, again, specialty in automotive and advanced manufacturing, um, he uh, is, is a career CFO, Robert is, having most recently served as a CFO for a $2 billion plus uh, tier one automotive uh, supplier, uh, and that being the ABC Group and Yazaki. He uh, is affiliate, affiliated as a past board member with the APMA, that's uh, the Auto Parts Manufacturers Association, Canada's Automotive Supplier Association. He's also a past board member with the Trillium Network uh, for Advanced Manufacturing and the Accelerate Zero Emissions Vehicle Coalition. Robert, so glad that you're uh, here with us today. And I understand uh, you have some solutions uh, to tell us about for uh, the financial needs of, uh, of companies uh, in, in Brampton and area. We do, we do indeed. Um, and uh, I mean, you Todd, you referenced that we have 80 top flight CFOs across across the country and we'll get you know more into some of the detail there but uh, uh, I mean in terms of in terms of pain points and, and what do we do our tagline is number the numbers that really matter and you know being financial people you might think that means your profitability or uh, some some other related metric but but you know it, it can also be uh, numbers that matter to the business owners and business operators that we work with. And uh, for example, it can be things like um, the, number of, the number of soccer and hockey games of their kids that they're missing, or the number of, of hours that they're working and spending in, their, in, in their airports or, uh, or traveling and, and you know, just really not, not getting the most out, out of life. So. Uh, yeah, I, I know in conversations that you and I have had in the past that um, you really are a, a, a partner, a coach uh, to companies that uh, you uh, you come into, uh, and uh, I, I like how you you describe uh, you, you like to solve pain points. So it could be the fact that maybe the current uh, CEO uh, or the finance staff is, uh, as you say, burning the midnight uh, oil and, and uh, compromising their family. There's so much change happening right now in terms of uh, finding good people to uh, serve in positions to solve uh, problems. Uh, um, what are some of the most common pain, pain points uh, with business owners and executives that uh, you, you like to best solve perhaps? So, so I, I would say you touched on one of them right off the bat, Todd, is that a lot of, a lot of companies that are growing and growing not only in size, but in complexity, have outgrown their top financial person. And, you know, so it's, it's not that, um, it's not that we're, we're here to re necessarily replace that person. We might help it to mentor them and help them get to the next level. And, and that, that might only be a couple of days a month, for example. I and mean, we, we can work on a, um, a really, you know, sp small involvement, but, but if, you know, even at two days a month or three days a month, uh, we become the CFO for that company. Tell us so, more how that model works. Sure, sure. Well, 
I mean, I think the first thing to, to, to note is that we work almost exclusively on referrals um, based on the good work that, we, that we've done. Or So we're very, very conscious of making sure that we do do a good job. Um, we are partnered uh, closely with all of the chartered banks and uh, very, very close relationships with the mid-sized accounting firms. Um, we tend to be the go-to source when uh, in a number of situations when comp companies are either growing to that next level, they need to, they need, you know, more complex reporting, they've got covenants. Um, and um, also when companies are in, are in distress or maybe they're heading towards distress and, the, you know, the last thing that you want is to get to put into the special loans category, for example. Mm -hmm. And um, having us in there early, many times we can, we can start and assess the situation, take action, and then avoid that kind of bad, bad result uh, that can end up uh, very, uh, very negative. Having uh, the referrals from the major accounting firms, from uh, the major banks uh, as well is uh, certainly a testament uh, uh, to your services. Uh, and um, I know that you know, it's with COVID, it's been so challenging to forecast. There's been supply issues, supply chain issues as well. Um, what, have you seen much change in terms of the, the type of engagements uh, you've had with uh, small and medium companies uh, since uh, COVID arrived? I, I would say absolutely yes. It's, it's, let me give you a flavor for them. I mean, at the very beginning, um, when there was a lot of uncertainty, there were the government relief programs uh, in place, you know, a little bit complicated to navigate. And so um, we, we actually put on programs where we were helping uh, for no charge, we were helping uh, companies to, to find their way around and make sure that they were maximizing on those relief programs. And as you know, they've turned out in many cases to have, to have saved uh, a, a lot of very good companies. Um, but, um, you know, I think on the negative side, you know, not being in person, there is, there is a negative to that. And certainly coming from a manufacturing and automotive background, walking the floor is important, looking at the, at the people, looking at the machines running, you, you, get, you get a different sense of the operations. Uh, but on the, on the flip side of that, uh, what we've discovered is that we can be tremendously effective working remote. And um, as a result of that, we've done, you know, we're doing clients where, I mean, I've got, I've got, a, I've got a significant client in, in the Vancouver area. Um, we've done work out of, out of the GTA for a Windsor company. Um, we've, um, we've got something on the East Coast as well. So, yeah, basically... It allows us to better match up the skill sets of our of our CFOs with what with what the company requires than before, where it was more regional or locally based. Yeah, well, very good. Well, that's great that your reach has uh, extended uh, uh, because of uh, uh, you. You mentioned, and I smiled uh, how much you can learn when you actually are in a plant and see the machinery, etc. We used to call that MBWA. Uh, management by walking around. Walking about, yeah. And, and, I, and I guess we're now in a kind of a MBZ uh, for a, a little bit longer anyway, management by Zoom, right? <laughs> <laughs> the best so way. true. <laughs> um, so I know that your specialty is in automotive and advanced uh, manufacturing. Uh, I'm just wondering, uh, is there a particularly ideal client uh, for uh, the CFO centers uh, personnel for that model? Is it a, uh, an ideal size or industry, a domestic sales or international sales focus? Uh, any, uh, uh, tell me uh, what clients you prefer or, or ones that you can uh, maybe have an example of ones that you can, can help the best. Sure, sure. I mean, our, our client base goes anywhere from three to $4 million in revenue up to well over a hundred million dollars in different circumstances. Um, a lot of them are in in the in a growth mode, and um, you know there's things ahead that they need to, to to do. They need to do spend more time managing based on the numbers. They need to be looking out into the horizon more, looking forward. 
Um, and, and they're going to have some very difficult strategic decisions of how they're going to spend, you know, their ma make major investments or major changes to their business models. And, um, you know, so those kinds of uh, uh, companies who don't have access to uh, a lot of experience, maybe they don't have formal boards. Uh, and, and, you know, having someone come in who's, uh, who's got a lot of experience, who's seen, seen it and done it and been there um, can be a big benefit. And, and I would add to that, though, it's not just the CFO who's in there because we operate um, seamlessly within our, our organization of 80 CFOs. So you're really getting, they're really getting the network, the entire network of 80 people. Um, I, I've yet to see a major financial problem that uh, someone in our group hasn't already experienced and could uh, lend a hand. Well, that's great. And uh, yeah, I mean, it is challenging uh, to forecast uh, these days in terms of demand. Uh, I know about, uh, you know, a lot of manufacturing haven't uh, had the same restrictions as other industries. Uh, but having someone to bounce ideas uh, off of, having someone to, with fresh eyes, look at your organization and ask you the strategic questions to uh, confirm, validate, or maybe bring a, a new approach uh, to your forecasting in these challenging uh, times certainly uh, uh, would be a value. And uh, uh, like you say, you don't uh, just hire one individual on a part-time basis, you have that entire network uh, uh, to, uh, uh, he has, uh, your, your, uh, your colleague has uh, that entire network to lean on as, uh, as well. Well, that's great. So um, I, I know from your own uh, qualifications and others that I've uh, met at the CFO Center that you have very high uh, standards in recruiting CFOs to be part of uh, your organization. Is it difficult uh, for any of the uh, accounting or CFOs that are out there that may have an interest in your organization? Is it difficult to become a part of your organization? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's very difficult. As I said before, we're, we're reliant on referrals. So we're very particular on who, who we'll bring in. Um, not only does the person have to have the skills and the experience and having in most cases work for companies typically of $100 million in sales or much more in some cases, billion, billions of dollars. Uh, but, um, but also, I mean, nobody comes to the CFO Center uh, for the money uh, to, maximize, to maximize it. Uh, they, uh, they'll often need, they're in that stage of their life when uh, they wanna give back. They wanna give back either to an industry or to a, to a community. Um, and, and in return, the trading that for you know, the satisfaction of helping, but also uh, a better work life balance, um, you know, versus the high pay 70, 80, 70, 80 hours a week and traveling, living off of airplanes, which I can certainly relate to. Um, um, I mean, that, that's the trade off. So, so finding the right people, but also people at the right stage in their career where this is the right solution for them. Well, that's great. Uh, those values I know are appreciated by lots of clients. They're similar to the values of uh, membership in our organization of the Brampton Board of Trade. We're looking for not only successful uh, businesses, uh, uh, but those that are willing to share their experience, give back and uh, help others uh, to uh, meet their objectives as well. So I'm glad that uh, the CFO Center and you and uh, Adnan and others that I've uh, met have uh, got actively uh, engaged. Um, how do you differentiate uh, the CFO Center from other options that uh, a small, medium-sized uh, uh, company might, uh, might have? What's uh, uh, the best way uh, for uh, uh, small, medium enterprises or for uh, an organization like ours to re refer clients to what what differentiates CFO Center? So I would I, I would say a number of things. Um, going going back to what what you just referred to, Todd, about you know our levels of uh, um, of recruitment uh, criteria. Um, just as, just as an example, we have the former or past CFOs for companies that include Cisco Foods. 
uh, extend to care, Perlator, Holt Renfrew, Shawcore, uh, Mac Cosmetics, Chapters Indigo, Shoeless Joe's. I, mean, I could go on and on, but um, um, you know we have the superstars. We have the we have the 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 CFOs who have been there and done it at, at the highest level with with some of the top companies in Canada, and so that that's definitely a huge uh, differentiator. And um, you know, we actually don't have a direct national competitor. There are uh, individual organizations that, and, I, and I'm not I'm not uh, saying anything negative about them, but the, the difference between us and some of these other organizations is that our people are uh, they are dedicated to the CFO Center. They, they they must we require that they be committed and dedicated. Um, we have you know, again, a big difference is the jobs that we do are, are also managed at the top by the regional directors. So if I have, you know, uh, 25 jobs out there with a number of CFOs, uh, I, I'm going to be managing that, that, that job to make sure that the customers are getting what they need and that the CFO is performing properly. And as well, we're, you know, we're conducting ongoing um, training for our, uh, for our CFOs because things change and they need to stay up to date um, on, on recent developments, be they financial or, or um, you know, ec economic, uh, economically based. Well, um, yeah, yes. So not only do you get the skills of a, of a highly skilled individual with a track record of success, uh, uh, you as regional director and, and me as a potential uh, client uh, have the added peace of mind that the regional director is uh, overseeing uh, the project. And to your earlier point, uh, the individual that I do uh, bring on board uh, in a very flex flexible model might just be two, two days uh, a month. That individual can rely on about 80 uh, others uh, nation, nationwide. So uh, those are pretty powerful differentiations for companies that are looking for additional uh, financial strategic uh, support uh, for, their, uh, for their companies. You mentioned uh, two days uh, per month as uh, an option. Tell us more, am, am I, uh, as a potential client, um, locked in to uh, a contract uh, for so many months or uh, a certain price? Uh, what uh, uh, are the, the other options and, and flexibility I might have as a client? Sure, sure. And I know you're, you're, you're a business uh, uh, entrepreneur you're, you're yourself, Todd, and, uh, um, and this will sound unusual, but it kind of, it's, it, it, it's commensurate with our, with our, you know, our will, our willingness to give back, and our desire to give back is that, that there is no, there is no um, commitment whatsoever. So, um, if our if our person works well, first of all, we put together a work plan that that you you would sign off on and make sure that you're happy with it. And you know, because it can, they can be done faster or slower depending on what kind of budget you want to allocate to it. Um, and um, but uh, if after a certain period of time you say, you know what, let's take a pause, or this isn't working for me, we shake hands and we stop and we stop it. Or, or you know, in the very rare case where you say, you know, I am on to a new stage now, Robert. I think I need a different skill set. Well, that problem is not yours, uh, Todd. That problem problem is mine. That problem is mine to go and find your next CFO, and then make that change out to make sure that for that next stage of your company's growth, that you've got the right person in there. Um, Very, good. Very good. Yeah, well, that is great to know from a, a small business, medium-sized uh, business perspective, uh, having uh, flexibility uh, in terms of contract and, uh, and, and budget, having flexibility, as you say, if uh, uh, scope changes or the area of expertise uh, changes, um, I, again, another powerful way that uh, CFO is differentiating the services it provides uh, uh, and really adding new value. Like you say, there's not much competition out there in terms of the network, the supervision, uh, and the, uh, the expertise and track record of the individuals that are, uh, that are contracted. Let's add to that the flexibility of uh, 
uh, of, of the engagements as well. So this has uh, been really, really interesting, uh, Robert. Is there anything else uh, that uh, uh, you'd like uh, viewers uh, of uh, our expert interview here at the, the Brampton Board of Trade to, uh, to know about uh, uh, what to expect uh, when, uh, when engaging with CFO or ca uh, calling them? I guess, I guess if there were one overriding thing, Todd, it would be to your, to your members who are, who are, you know, business people in the community is that, um, you know, the value that a strong strategic partner to help, to, to help it can be, can be so impactful for your business. And, and when there's no risk to it, when there's such a small, um, uh, requirement. I mean, I, it, I would, I would say it, it makes sense as a, for small businesses, mid-sized companies, um, to at least try, try it out or have a conversation, and and um, we can all learn new things and in, in other areas. And I, I think most of your membership would be pleasantly surprised to, uh, to to have that conversation and see what they can get. Uh, for, for a very, very affordable price. Well, that's great, uh, Robert. I really do appreciate you taking uh, time with us today to explore a little bit further uh, how uh, and why and when to get uh, involved with the CFO Centre and uh, uh, walking us uh, through uh, what engagements uh, look like and uh, the quality control that you, you have, the supervision, the, uh, the network and, uh, and flexibility. Uh, our guest today, ladies and gentlemen, has uh, been Robert Kunahiro, uh, who is the uh, Managing Director for the CFO Center uh, in Halton uh, Peel. Uh, Robert, thank you so much for these uh, insights. I know I've learned a lot, and I uh, certainly will recommend that lots of our uh, clients and customers and members uh, view uh, this interview to get to know a little bit more about the CFO uh, Center. I know that some of your uh, folks have uh, engaged in our uh, events, and of course, maybe I can outline a couple of upcoming events that uh, would be of particular interest to viewers and uh, to members of uh, uh, CFO uh, Center. This Friday, we continue our conversation with the party leaders. That's the provincial party leaders. Last week, we had a really engaging interview with uh, the leader of the official opposition in Ontario, Andrea Horvath, leader of the NDP. This Friday, uh, we will have in conversation with Stephen Del Duca, leader of the Ontario Liberal Party. That's at 8 a.m. on Friday the 28th. And we'll discuss his priorities and vision for the province in the lead up to the provincial election that's scheduled for June 2nd. On February 24th, we'll be joined by Green Party leader, uh, Mike uh, Schreiner and uh, the Premier, has uh, promised a visit in March as uh, well. For those of you that are interested in the development of our city, February 8th is our State of the City event. Again, uh, a meeting that uh, uh, is in the mornings. This one starts at 11.30 and will go to about 1.30. And this is your opportunity, again, it's a virtual meeting, uh, to hear from two important community leaders, the city's mayor, Mayor Patrick Brown, and the chair of the Brampton Board of Trade, Donna Pascal. It's our State of the City annual event, an annual address to the business community in Brampton. Uh, they will both share perspectives on Brampton's future, both from a public sector point of view, council's point of view at uh, uh, City uh, Hall uh, from Mayor Brown, and the private sector point of view from the chair of the Brampton Board of Trade, Donna Fagan Pascal, who's a VP of HR. Uh, and Communications Public Affairs with uh, Diana Kidd. All registrants to State of the City on February 8th will receive a $25 gift card uh, of their choice uh, between uh, the Food Quotient, a really interesting uh, uh, restaurant, vegan, uh, healthy food, and J. Red and uh, Company, uh, a well-known uh, uh, restaurant, uh, great flavors, great uh, uh, selection, great menu, or they can then donate uh, their uh, uh, $25 to the Sheridan Student Emergency Fund. We uh, look forward to supporting the post-secondary students that we have here with Algoma, with uh, uh, Rice.
Ryerson and uh, uh, this event we're supporting Sheridan Student Emergency Fund. Uh, we'll also show appreciation uh, to Peel Region's finest uh, in awarding what we do annually. We always look forward to this part of our State of the uh, City event, uh, the Brampton Board of Trade Police Service Awards. So one fine member of the uh, police service uh, will be recognized for his or her uh, amazing uh, contributions to uh, the safety of our community and uh, uh, to the police service. So ladies and gentlemen, you can always learn more about uh, how to meet uh, potential customers, suppliers, great people like uh, Robert uh, Kunihiro and uh, his team through any one of our events by going to BramptonBOT.com. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at BramptonBOT to get first insight on upcoming events and networks as well. Robert, thank you for your time today. To our viewers, thank you so much. Thank you to our sponsors, uh, CN, Toronto Pearson, uh, Deloitte, and uh, Goodison Insurance. We appreciate uh, your fine contributions that allow us to have these engaging conversations with experts that can contribute so much uh, to our business community. Thank you, everybody. And we'll see you again real soon at an upcoming Board of Trade event. Bye now.